Elsewhere in Nigeria, a nonpartisan stakeholder, Nsuka Professionals Association in Enugu State, has alerted the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al Kali Baba, on unresolved assassination of the Labour Party candidate for Enugu East Senatorial District days preceding February 25, 2023 presidential election, tasking him on improved security in the state ahead of Saturday's governorship and State House of Assembly elections. The president of the group, Charles Nuodo Jr., says no arrests have been made since the incident and announced a donation of 1 million naira to the family of the slain politician in solidarity with their grief. He urged the IGP to dispatch a special team of detectives to Enugu State with a mandate to seek out and apprehend all those directly connected with the crime, no matter their status or extent of connections in the society. The brutal assassination of the Labour Party candidate for Enugu East Central District in the days preceding the February 25th, 2023 elections by individuals who are yet to be apprehended. We are appalled that no arrests have been made and no suspects have been interrogated by the security agencies to date. The Inspector General of Police is implored to dispatch a special team of detectives to Enugu State with a mandate to seek out and apprehend all those directly or indirectly connected with this heinous crime, no matter their status or extent of connections in the society. The Insuka Professional Association announces a donation of one million naira to the family of the slain politician in humanitarian solidarity for their grief, along with all persons of goodwill in Enugu State and Nigeria. It is our resolve to ensure that this crime is thoroughly investigated and justice served on the guilty in accordance with our laws. B. Reports of violence and electoral malpractices. Credible reports of plans by desperate politicians in Enugu State to compromise key officials of INEC, the Nigeria Police Force, the Nigeria Army, and other security agencies in Enugu State with a view to frustrate the conduct of free, fair, and credible elections. We are informed that an INEC Enugu State official, Mrs. Ife Naono, has been specifically accused of being the coordinator of the plots to disenfranchise Enugu voters. We call on the chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Diakubu, to immediately recuse this staff from all official activities related to the forthcoming election, so as to reinforce the credibility of the electoral process and also protect the career of this staff in the event that she's innocent of the accusation. Now, lawyer and former Enugu State Commissioner for Environment, Chijoke Edoga, is the Labour Party governorship candidate in that southeastern state where the People's Democratic Party has retained power since Nigeria's latest return to democracy in 1999. Edoga says he comes well prepared for the job having gained the requisite administrative experience during his time in government and over an outstanding career in public service. However, with the newness of his party on the political scene in the state, how does he plan to swim with the sharks come this weekend? Will the Pito be an obedient movement be enough to see him through? And how does he plan to approach the issue of governance if victorious? We have Barrister Odioga joining us now. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I really appreciate it. It's an oh. honor to be on Arise. And it's a pleasure to have you as well. So do you think you will enjoy or reap from that um, Peter will be effects, more, you know, to put it lightly? Would you reap from that come Saturday? Or do you think that it might not work out for you, but it will be based on your own experience? What do you think will enhance your chances on Saturday? Thank you. My chances are very bright, very, very bright. If you look at uh, what's happened on 25th February, you realize, you know that uh, certainly our party is the party to beat. There are eight House of Rep seats in Enugu State. LP took seven out of eight, losing the eight only marginally and in the controversial circumstances. Two senatorial seats were contested. Uh, LP took one conclusively and decisively and comprehensively. And one of those seats taken is the, it, it was going to be occupied by the incumbent governor, the current governor of Enugu State. He was, he's a sitting governor, 
and he, he ran on that PDP to represent Enugu North Central Zone. He was comprehensively defeated. I, I think he even lost uh, in his polling unit. The other one, uh, LP, lost because in, the, in, the, in also controversial circumstances because all the votes, all the votes that led to the loss, more than 8,000 votes were garnered in one, only one community against the run of play. And uh, so um, the other one, the third one, did not hold because the LP candidate, Senator Barreso um, Ibochuku, was killed, was murdered in broad daylight on the Wednesday, like three days preceding the election. So it was put off. I was going to go on simultaneously with my own. But if you realize that uh, LP took the two House of Reps seats in that area and the lead was quite huge, you will just, you will know that, uh, you will sense that uh, Oibochuku would have won that seat. So if you look at what has happened the past two weeks and uh, there's not a, the, the possibility of a, a major shift in electoral decision, well, it's, not going to, it's, not, it's not likely, it's not possible, then you know that we're good to go. The ground has been fertile for a major shift from PDP to any other party that was strong. But we were, we are all, people have been hindered over the time by the electoral uh, situation. So a big factor is the Electoral Act, which by the grace of God, our president appended his signature to, which returned power to the voters. Of course, there is also the Obi effect. Obi is a major and iconic figure in the popular imagination of people in the Southeast, people in Eastern Nigeria, and in fact, all over Nigeria. So his pull and his impact on our electoral outcome is also uh, a major factor, and will be a major factor going forward. Because there's a large dose of sympathy out here for Obi, in the sense that uh, people feel that uh, uh, a few things need to be explained about the outcome of the presidential election. So they are hopeful that Obi will have, get justice in the courts, and there's a need to build an electoral base for him in the southeast, eastern Nigeria, spreading outwards. So there's a sense which one can say firmly and categorically that uh, Saturday looks good for LP and Chijoke Edoga. Thank you. All right, great. Now, you famously said you need no manifesto to lead the people of Enugu to glory. Uh, what roadmap are you using to uh, pave your way forward if you no, don't need a manifesto? I couldn't, I couldn't have said so. I couldn't have said that. That's the people putting it wrongly. Maybe uh, putting it wrongly. I couldn't have said so. I've been uh, involved in political activities over a long time. I say that... Uh, there's a difference between having a manifesto and making a public presentation, a public show, or presenting it. That's what I said. I said, I, my clear, clearly, I have made, I have presented my manifesto in several forums, and my manifesto puts the renaissance of the Southeast in the front burner with Enugu as takeoff point. And I've campaigned in 240 words, 240 words out of 260 words in Enugu State. And my positions on major issues have been consistent on water, on light, on unemployment, on uh, infrastructure, on roads, on agriculture as a, as a, as a, as a path to the new world base. So I say that there's, there's really no point to make a public presentation, a public show of presenting what in most cases the presenters didn't even write themselves. And if you ask them one line out of it, they will get it wrong because there's a misalignment of what is written and what their capacity are or is. So somebody who promises to do 10,000 roads and uh, who promises to uh, start an economy from zero to 40 billion in one year, those things are contained in manifestos that have been read here and made a, a public show made of it. So I said there's a difference between public presentation and one having a manifesto. So I definitely have a manifesto. Is the manifesto is the path, is the path the, the light to where you're going. And of course, where I'm going has been consistently canvassed and I've been consistent on what my programs are with regards to power, water, roads, agriculture, pension and gratuities, and what needs to be done. So that's, is, is, so it's a deliberate um, misrepresentation of what I said. Well, thank you for clarifying that, Mr. Edoga. But, um, you know, we have reports. Thank you, my dear. We have reports from, you know, you know in the newspapers and whatnot regarding possible, possible attempts being made by governors or some politicians that are looking to 
secure this election and make sure that it goes their way at whatever cost, basically willing to rig no matter what it, the cost might be. Do you share that concern when you hear that some politicians or governors might be collaborating with Rex and other, others that are supposed to ensure that this is a free, fair and transparent um, election? I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. In the past 24 hours, I've held about uh, two or three uh, press conferences to bring to bear, to bring to fore the concerns we have in Enugu State, all over Enugu State, about uh, the threat of rising of insecurity and the threat or, uh, or information about efforts made by the PDP, by the PDP, the current government in Enugu State, to subvert the electoral choices for our people. Of course, if one, if one says that you there is, a certain, there is a certain logic to it. Because just before this election, the PDP was the major party in Enugu State. And uh, overnight, everything, has, everything was, was, a, was a subverted, so to say, was, was a snatched from them. So they didn't see it coming. The PDP didn't see it coming. Not many persons in Nigeria saw the OB wave coming. So there is a, a certain sense in which one should believe that PDP was taken on our in the United States. They have been, uh, come out, they have been um, sort of somnolent or, or set so sure of their, of their hold over our people that um, they have become like a somnambulistic and, uh, and uh, not responsive to the wish of our people. So this, this election of 25th February happened and they, they, were, they were like, oh, woken up from sleep, woken up from slumber, and their self-assurances, their confidences smashed. So if, if, there, if the one says there was a response, a negative response to that defeat, it's not too far from the truth. And now the state is rife. Enugu state is rife with stories of uh, people, milit uh, military, military uniform, police uniform, being prepared for people. It's still, it's, state is rife with stories. And some even people have tendered evidences of vehicles bringing in uh, thugs into the state. Even yesterday, somewhere in a trial layout, so where in, in other parts of Enugu State, people saw vehicles packed with thugs moving to the home of, um, of a, 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 one of the candidates yeah. in a, Enugu East Territorial Zone, a major candidate. So, and um, even my own LG okay. issues of where I come from, we do understand. two days ago, the police, the police. Thank you for painting such a yeah. detailed picture. The attack, and, uh, and, and I do the hope place. that the authorities are able to arrest the situation and that uh, Saturday, March 18th, will be pe a peaceful outing. That's Barrister Chijoka Edeoga, who is a Labour Party governorial candidate, uh, uh, governorship candidate, candidate, excuse me, for Enugu State. Mm -hmm.